Hello and welcome back to the second part of the shape um, tutorial in um, Hypnotizer V4. In this section I'm going to cover how to um, auto use the auto alignment tool to align a projector in the virtual um, shape space to the physical projector in your real world. It's actually best done when you have a model and a real projector. Um, the but I'll mimic this basically in the 2D space on the um, video capture and then I'm also going to demonstrate how to use the post-processing tool which allows you to do blending of multiple projectors as well as um, warping the outputs to make them fit if and to counter any lens distortions or other um, problems you may encounter. So. I've loaded the um, scene from the previous model, uh, from the previous video, so we've got our doll's house with the texture on it. So let's just quickly go back and um, change the view to um, alignment view. And then go straight into the alignment tool. Now in the alignment tool, the um, first thing that you'll see, actually let me make that fit that a little bit better on here so you can see the um, hypnotizer output on the right. Um, on the top you'll see all the connections that have been made between virtual projectors and, and real world outputs. So that could be hypnotizer but it could also be local um, shape engine outputs. Again I've got a viewport here where I can see the camera and the model. Using control I can navigate the free camera or I can use those the view options to go to specific viewpoints. Let me just um, um, zoom in a little bit using the wheel and then switch the display to the alignment view. Now in here uh, basically you've got a solid model with the wireframes outlining um, the, um, the object and vertices. Now the way the auto alignment works is that you select four or more points and correlate them between the um, 3D model inside shape with 2D coordinates on the um, projector's output. Sounds complicated, is it is not, it's quite simple. To get started what you need to do is um, you pick a point, for example I'll pick the top left of the roof here and then you hit S on your keyboard. And what you can see happens on the output here on the right hand side via the network on the hypnotizer is you will get this um, this uh, aim tool. So now I can go in the real world and what it is projecting may not quite be right. So the top left corner of the house model may for example be here where I've just placed it. Oh. Let me run you through the keyboard. So you've got the um, arrow keys to do the fine nudging. You can use control and left and right to do bigger jumps and shift left and right to do really big jumps. So if you use the keyboard you'll very quickly be um, uh, where you need to do, need to be. Okay let's say the top, top left corner of the roof is here. I hit S again and what you can see over here in the user interface is that it stored the coordinates between let me see if I can expand it a little bit between the um, between the um, point in the 3D world and the 2D um, point on the projector. So I need to do that for at least three more points. So for example let's do the top right hand corner, press S, move my cursor to where I think it might be. Now I'm totally guessing here because I haven't got a projector attached. Press S again, it stores the coordinates. Choose the bottom right hand corner, press S. Now the best points to choose, press S again, are actually the ones that are not only in various places in the 2D plane but also um, have varying depth points. For example it would actually be useful if I chose one of the points in the back. Let me just do that. So let's say the projector is slightly on the left here so I can choose this point there 
and let's just say that point plus s again let's just say that point would be maybe there so watch what happens when I press the last button um, it then uses algorithms to auto calculate the position where it is now, because I didn't use a real-world um, projection example here it's actually put the projector somewhere and calculated it if you use it in a on a, on a real projector then you'll find that uh, it will get quite close to uh, mapping all the points um, to where they are in the real world what you now may do and carry on is pick more points to improve um, the accuracy of the alignment what you can also do well, actually let me pick one more point just to show so click S move it somewhere press S and now it's found a slightly different point what I now can do is I can disable certain points and say uh, and you can see the effect of those points on the alignment and you may choose hang on this one I didn't do really well and then delete that particular point um, you can always add more points and the more points usually the better so that's the auto alignment tool um, other things settings that you've got here you may want to explore you can change the color of of your um, crosshair and the background uh, again the pro projector properties sometimes it's quite useful to for example hide the model because when you're doing the uh, crosshair um, then you may want to not have the model in the way okay so let's just say we finished our job here and we're quite happy with the alignment that we have the next task that we've got ahead of you of, of us um, say we've got two projectors one from the left hand side and one from the right hand side is to um, create a blend and mask certain areas let's go to the post processing tool for that so in the post processing tool again this is on a per output basis so each per output will um, output connection will have its own unique set of this um, let's start with some warping I can click and enable warping and for example if the lens is slightly distorted I can now go and push and pull the points and as you can see it pushes and pulls the uh, model now this is a 2d operation but it is incredibly useful to just nudge certain parts of the texture in if they're not quite fitting because a lot of the times the um, the model won't be necessarily 100% matching your real-world object or your projector may have some lens distortions if you need more control points you can just up the number and then have even finer grained control over individual parts of the object okay if you need to disable the um, effect it has um, you can do that via this tick box over here um, masking <clears throat> masking basically enables you to um, take out parts of the picture or make it transparent so let's just enable it the first thing that you see is it masks out everything but the good th news is in the editor you can bring part of the model back Ah, please note that what you see in the uh, in this um, in this editor is actually the view of the um, projector um, so I can now right click and add a, um, a masking shape so I can now select all my nodes and say okay I want this projector to only take care of so the front half of half of the front or everything let's say I wanted to do everything not half the building because I want another projector to take care of the other half of the building so what I can do is I can just 
this. So I can do a multi selection of the node and the warp. And what I want to do Okay, let's do a rough one. I'm quite happy with that. What I need is an additional node here so I can follow the roof line and then go straight down. So what I do is add linear node. And now I can just follow the, the roof line here. And here I want to just come straight down on the object. What I now can do is I can use these handles to define the blend area. So as you can see on the output, it now does a nice fade to black. So on the second projector, I can do the same in reverse. And, um, and basically um, create a soft edge blend between the two projectors back onto the model. I hope that um, um, that uh, gave you a good idea on how to um, auto align and then create a blend. Um, probably the best way to explore this is um, to um, have a simple model like a box and start playing with those features and um, see how they work. I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, tutorial. Um, do watch out for new ones as um, we're releasing new versions we will um, publish new videos and um, to explain more of the functions and features of shape and also hypotizer thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon goodbye